friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk yet again about how to get started into preparedness, especially for those who are trying to figure out how to go about this, how just how to get started, let alone how do you afford to do it, and then how do you make space. So we're going to cover some of this, but I'll also be linking you back to several of our older videos. A couple of them are ones that Patrick and I had done together. One was a part of a whole series of how and why we prepare 11 part series. So I'll actually link to that whole playlist because you might be interested in that. But one of the videos in that playlist is budgeting for prepping, which I'm going to be talking a little bit about as well as the video that I did, I think last year on how to start buying in bulk. That's going to also be very helpful, especially if your finances are tight. And then there was another one an even older one that the two of us had done together about getting started in preparedness that uh, I'll link to as well. So remember, this isn't just about preparing for the end of the world. It's not just about assuming there's going to be some major grid collapse, which many believe, especially those who actually work in the industry and can tell you how delicate our, at least here in the U.S., our power grid really is. But it's about being prepared for whatever life throws your way because it might be something that only affects you and your own personal household. And we've talked about this many times in many videos, so I'm not going to rehash all the many different scenarios that can happen but they can and do happen all the time to everyday average normal people so first of all let's just talk about where to start well where to start is going to depend on where you're at right now and what is most important to you my first thought it always goes to making sure you have food and water on hand because these are two of the things that can be very difficult to get in the case of some sort of grid down. And when I use that term, I'm talking generally. It could be any type of situation that affects you personally. So having food on hand, having water on hand, even if it means something like a job loss that causes you to fall back on your food store so that that money that would normally be spent on groceries can go to pay other bills. Obviously we need food and we definitely need water to, to survive. So if you don't have any water coming in because you're you had a blizzard that froze up all your pipes or there's some contaminant spill that got into the city water supply whatever it is that water is actually going to be even more important than food and it will sell out quickly and it is proven time and time again that if it's something that affected your city your location the store shelves will be bare within an hour of any type of water. So this is why you must have these things stored up. And though I don't recommend storing up the plastic water bottles for several reasons, at least that's something. It's better than nothing. But doing it that way is far more expensive than even just filling some old juice bottles or milk jugs or whatever you have with tap water. That's also better than nothing and it's gonna save you a lot of money. Then obviously food. How do you get started in food? Well, again, I'm gonna refer back to that budgeting, you know, for how to buy in bulk because I go over some price breakdowns and also what to watch for. But what happens is a lot of people who are getting new into doing this often have this misconception that people who have two, three years worth of food storage, have a solar power backup or gas or diesel generators or whatever it is that they have, they make this assumption that, oh, well, they must be really rich and that's why they are where they are. Especially if you're one that has watched shows like uh, Doomsday Preppers, where you'll see a lot of those people that there are some of those people that are really rich and they can just go run out and buy bunkers and, and you know, three years worth of freeze dried foods from some company that's really expensive. When most of the time, that's not actually the case. That's not actually reality. For most people, it came by starting small. 
and building on that so let me give you an example you're going to the grocery store maybe you go to the grocery store once a week maybe you go daily maybe you go twice a week whatever it is set aside a certain dollar amount of whatever that allotment is that you give yourself for grocery shopping so if you're especially if you're one that is good at budgeting like i always used to have a strict budget for groceries that i did not go over this much per week take a portion of whatever that is is. let's say it's fifty dollars and you take five dollars of that so the forty five dollars is going to cover you for the immediate grocery expenses the other five dollars is going to go towards buying extras of something even if it's something as simple as a couple of extra cans of green beans or soup whatever it is that you and your family will eat and know that that's something you can put on the shelf that can last for a long time in food storage the more you do that especially if you do it with each trip you might be surprised at how such a small amount can go a long ways as you start seeing that build up it follows the same principle as when you get yourself out of debt or when you start trying to get yourself out of debt now we've been out completely debt free for gosh i know it was at least two three years before i even started my youtube channel and boy i tell you what that was so liberating but when you first start thinking about how are we going to pay off these debts it can seem overwhelming and impossible but it is possible and you might surprise yourself and no we didn't do dave ramsey's courses we just used common sense and started buckling down and what happens is there's a snowball effect so once you start seeing your money that you've been even if it's just little increments at a time. Once you start seeing that build up or you're seeing that debt start to drop because you've just been putting an extra $5 a month onto that debt, then you'll find a way to put another extra $5 and then another and then another. So you get creative and it becomes more like a game to find out what else can I do away with? What extra daily, weekly expense am I doing that I really don't need. And one example I like to give quite a bit, and please don't take this as any kind of judgment. I don't think there's anything wrong with having our little luxuries here and there, but if this is important to you, sometimes we have to cut back on these luxuries for at least a time to get ourselves ahead on bills or to get out of debt or to start putting preparedness items aside. So at any rate, if you're visiting a coffee stand on a daily basis, start tallying up how much money that is every day. Can you simply just make your own coffee at home? You're gonna save yourself so much more money. It might only cost you 20, 30 cents a day to make coffee at home, whereas you might be spending as much as seven or eight dollars a day on coffee stand coffee. And you can add your own flavorings, you can make your own homemade extracts and add a little cream if you like to frou-frou it up a little bit because you like that extra flavor in your coffee that's fine too you're still going to save yourself a ton of money let's say your your coffees you're going on the cheaper side and you're only paying five dollars a cup per day or even if it's only five days a week that you're doing that so you're looking at 25 dollars a week and in a whole month that's a hundred dollars that you're going to be saving let's take out maybe five dollars out of there for all your little extras that you're going to put in your coffee and the cost of the coffee to make it yourself so let's say 95 dollars just how far can that 95 dollars go to start putting up a little bit of extra into your food storage now and of course this this principle also applies to wanting to save up money for buying bigger items that you think you're going to need and what each person needs and finds most important is going to be very different you should not feel pressured into buying any equipment whether it be a big fancy grain mill like we have a freeze dryer a dehydrator until you sit down and figure out what is going to be most important to your needs and the needs of your family some people might be grain free they have no need for a grain mill so it would be silly to spend four or five hundred dollars on a big fancy grain mill if that's you don't eat grain or even if you do maybe it's going to be cheaper for you to stock up on flowers rather than whole grains and you can do that though yes it's always best to stock up on whole grains 
because they they will hold their shelf life better than flowers you can still do flowers you can still do it if you store them properly so i have videos on this that i will also link to down below but typically if you're trying to put up a lot put them in mylar bags seal them up you don't have to use oxygen absorbers just push out as much air as you can seal it up good and then put it in a bucket that will keep it safe from bugs and rats and mice and so on that's the purpose of the buckets because uh pests can eat through the mylar easy enough and rats can actually eat through plastic buckets too so you might even consider like some people do getting like galvanized garbage cans and putting them in there that's another great idea so again you got to sit down and consider what is the most important preparedness item that you need is it a generator is it going to cost three thousand four thousand dollars well you're going to need to start now and find ways to start cutting costs once you start learning how to live without certain luxuries you'll realize wow i didn't really need that and then you'll start finding other things to cut if you're one that likes to go out and buy brand new clothing for instance you might find that shopping secondhand will save you far more money or learn how to make some of your own clothes out of secondhand found fabrics, even if they're old curtains and sheets. I've made a lot of skirts out of curtains, sheets, tablecloths, and so on. It just things I found at, at garage sales. In fact, this skirt I'm gonna show you a picture of right here was made entirely of garage sale find fabrics. All of them were either pillowcases, sheets. One of the fabrics was a scarf. Some of it was a uh, curtains. I don't remember how much money went into it, but it was just a few dollars worth of fabrics that went into that skirt. The clothes I'm wearing right now, in fact, I'm wearing a homemade skirt. I'm wearing a t-shirt I found at a garage sale. And a lot of the flannels you'll see me wear, I found at garage sales. You might be surprised at the nice clothes that people will wear for one season and then turn around for and sell for 25 cents or a dollar at a garage sale. And a lot of those clothes too can also be cut up if it's not something you would wear, like flannels for instance. I always grab flannel shirts when I see them because the flannel in those shirts can be used for making other things like table napkins so you can save money on paper napkins and so on the list goes on and on which reminds me i'm going to go ahead and link another playlist down below on ways that i recycle different types of fabric so for example i have one on how i recycle flannel fabrics from sheets and shirts uh t-shirt material is another one and then another one is how i recycle just regular cotton sheets and there's a few others in there and jeans and so on so i'll link to that full playlist so you can find ways that you can take some of the old clothes you may already have that you don't wear anymore and repurpose them into something that will save you money so now you'll have a little even more freed up money to start pouring into stocking up on whatever it is you need to do or saving that money for that big purchase that you believe that you really need and then another thing to consider that i don't think we we mentioned in the other videos like this and that is look around at items that you have that you do not use if you cannot repurpose it to help better your situation then consider selling those items and whether it be you have a big old garage sale or you put them on your Facebook market or you put them on eBay or whatever outlet there is out there and see if you can get a little money, not only free up some space for the items you're gonna need to store, but also to get a little cash coming back that you can then put into that prepping fund. And then another thing I wanted to bring up again about starting small. So a lot of you know we have a solar power setup that we can rely on about nine months out of the year. Actually, we use it all year round. It's just that we can't depend on it fully during the winter months because it's so dark and our days are so short that we just don't get enough collection to depend on it as much but thankfully we have a wood stove to fall back on as far as that goes because a wood stove can take place of many other things. And by the way, I have a video on 
you know, wood stoves and if it's worth it and what to look into, the pros and cons. And somebody gave me that idea and I thought it was an excellent idea, the pros and cons of having a wood stove, because it may not be for you. So I'll go ahead and link to that video in the description box down below as well. In the case of us with the solar power, it was the same thing. We didn't really start investing in it though until after we got the house paid off. We had already been into prepping. We had already been putting up food stores. We still had the house to pay off though. So we were able little by little to not only work on cutting stuff back more and more so more money could go onto the principal of the house, we were also able to still keep putting up preps and other in other ways such as food and so on and then once we got the house paid off that freed up money for us to be able to then start putting it into bigger items such as the solar power setup we didn't just go spend thousands of dollars in one lump sum and buy this setup nope we started with four solar panels i think it was it was either two or it was four, I can't remember. And then little by little, we added to that as we were able, and then also acquired the batteries, little by little. And we've just built on it through the years. And actually, we even have more solar panels and batteries that we've purchased that aren't added to our setup here. They're kind of a backup setup that we're probably gonna use on either a different piece of property or eventually add onto what we have here. We haven't decided yet, it's still every, there's so many things going on, which by the way, I know some of you are wondering, because I've, I've had people saying, oh, you and Patrick need to start doing videos again, and we talk about it every now and then. The problem is, is that, <laughs> Uh, and this is also why you don't see as many videos coming out by Patrick is, is he is so busy with so many other projects going on. He just hasn't had the time. And then we're both so busy that it's really hard for us to coincide our time to be able to shoot videos together. So it's mostly been falling on me to shoot the videos just as it was when I first started my channel. It, well, it was all my channel to start with. I was the one that encouraged him to start shooting videos. And I have been giving him some ideas of videos he should be doing. It's a matter of him making the time to do it when he's able because he's trying to keep up on making those chambers and the colloidal silver generators and some other projects we have in the works that we may or may not talk about because even though we share a lot with you to help teach you and help get you in the right direction as far as that goes we still don't show all of our cards because there is such thing as opsec which reminds me of another video series that we did back in early 2020 keep in mind it was early 2020 about tough topics for discussion and in one of those we talked about opsec so i'll link to that full playlist down below as well so you can check that out because i believe there's some really important things you have to consider uh, when it comes to preparedness, especially when you're first, first getting started, there's a lot of topics in there that you need to know, that you need to really weigh out for yourself, what you, how you plan on handling different situations as they come up. And then one of the last things I wanted to bring up, at least as far as food goes, is if you haven't started a garden yet, you need to do that There's, as best as you can. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do something. It's something small, even if, if it's just growing a few herbs on a windowsill or on a little veranda, whatever it is that you have. Try your best to find a way to be able to s at least supplement your food storage with fresh items that you can grow yourself. And if you can't do that, then at least if you know someone, a loved one or whatever that might have some property, a lot of people do this, they will basically do like a share where they will turn that person's, a section of that person's property into a garden and they'll do all that work and then they share in the benefit of the produce that's being grown so both parties get to benefit if the person that has the property just doesn't have the time to, or desire to deal with a garden but doesn't mind having the fresh produce so there are some various different ideas and please if you know of any other ideas that can be similar to that that can help people who don't have the space or area to grow a garden please share down below in comments so people can get some various different ideas that will suit them and their situation because I do realize not everyone can just run out and, and uh, start a garden. But there are ways that you can at least do a little bit and a little bit is just like with anything, a little bit is better than none at all. And I think that's the thing too, is a lot of people think, well, I only have a dollar extra a week. I can't do anything with a dollar extra a week. So I'll just go ahead and spend it on a candy bar instead. 
Well, with that kind of thinking, you're never going to get ahead. If you look at that dollar, like, wow, this dollar can buy me another can of beans for my food stores. That's still something. And again, something's better than nothing. So the last thing I wanted to cover was about space and storage. So that's another challenge for a lot of people, especially if they're living in just small homes or an apartment, where are you gonna store all this stuff? I did do a video not too long ago, maybe sometime within the past year about storage for small spaces where I threw out a bunch of different ideas and then also like I always try to do now, ask people to share some other ideas in the in the comments below so you can watch that video and then see the different ideas i threw out there and some of them are things that i've done and some of them were ideas that i compiled from the internet by doing a little bit of research and so you have that plus the other great ideas that commenters were able to add in there so please go check out that video now if you're unfamiliar how to open up the description box to find all these many links that I'll be putting down there. All you have to do is if you're on a computer, then look right down here below my channel name. You'll see rain country. And then you look a little farther down in all caps, you'll see the words show more. Just click on those words, show more. And then that description box will open right up and you'll find all those links. And then if you're on a smart device, which it seems most people do these days, typically it's gonna be a little gray arrow of some kind right over here in this corner right down over here and you just touch that and that will open up the description box so you can find the links to the other videos all right well i sure hope you found this video helpful don't forget to also if you're new to this read the helpful comments that i know there'll be a lot of great people that will come in and give a lot of wonderful ideas down below and that should be very helpful in getting you on the right path to do what you need to do to take care of the future of yourself and of your family all right well thanks for watching take care and god bless